So good afternoon, everybody. My name is Kamini, and I am a storyteller. When was the last time you heard someone tell you a story? A story from the oral tradition, an epic, a myth, a legend, a folk tale, a fairy tale, perhaps even a short fable. There was a time when entire communities gathered together to listen to the storyteller tell stories. The storyteller helped people to understand, to understand how the sky came to be up so high, to understand how tiger got stripes, to understand what happened to us when we die, to understand how our entire tribe came to be. In the Malay language, the storyteller is called Penglipur Lara. This means the dispeller of worries or the soothsayer. There was a time when every cave and mountain and village had a storyteller who was the gatekeeper of our ways of being. And then came change. With invention and discovery, with science and industrialization, we had answers for death and disease. Rainfall and drought could be anticipated and predicted, and tiger stripes became a code of genetics. And then there was the radio. We could listen to stories on the radio. We could even see stories taking place inside a small box right in front of us. And with all of these changes, the young apprentice of the storyteller began to leave the village and go to look for work that paid more. And with all of these changes, the storyteller and his art of telling stories had to learn to adapt in order to survive these changes. Storytellers know a lot of stories. That's why they are storytellers. But the biggest skill of a storyteller is the ability to adapt these stories based on the kind of listeners in the audience, based on the time duration they have, based on the context within which they tell their stories. A repertoire is important. It is a tool of the trade. A good, strong repertoire is wide and it is varied. But what is more important is how we take something old and ancient and we retell it so that it is relevant for today's listeners, today's contemporary listeners, our audiences. And we do this through the artistry of storytelling. We do this through performative skills. We do this as performing artists. We look at the audience, we study them, and we think about how we can play with language with vocabulary, with movement, with expression, with gestures, perhaps with a little bit of costuming and props. And then we represent these old stories back to our listeners of today. A story told well is a memorable story. And when something is memorable, it sticks. Ideas are contained within stories, and ideas can help us change how we perceive the world. Ideas can inspire us. Ideas can compel all of us to get up and act and take action. Stories are a conduit for ideas to help create change. And at this point, I will tell you a story. There was once an old widow woman who had two sons and two daughters-in-law and many, many, many grandchildren. She lived in a small hut with a family. All of these people, though surrounded by so many people, she was incredibly lonely. She had all these stories inside of her that she wanted to share. But every time she went to her two sons, they would say that they were too busy with work. Every time she went to her two daughters-in-law, they would say they had chores to do. Every time she went to her many, many, many grandchildren, they would run away and play. 
And so the poor old widow woman kept all the stories inside of her. And soon she grew and grew and grew larger in size. And now this became a problem for her sons and daughters-in-law and many, many grandchildren. They accused her of taking up too much space in the house. So finally, the day came where she had enough. She walked out of that hut. She walked and walked and walked and walked to the end of that village. And there she saw what must have been once upon a time, a house. There was no roof. All the windows and doors were gone. Only the four walls stood standing. So the old widow woman stepped inside what must have been once upon a time, the front door. She faced the wall in front of her and cried out all her anger against her firstborn son, and that wall crumbled. She turned to the next wall and she cried out all her anger against her eldest daughter-in-law, and that too crumbled. She turned to the next wall and she wept her rage against her youngest son, and it cracked. She turned to the last and final wall and wept her rage against her second daughter-in-law, and it too crumbled. The old widow woman was surrounded by dust, stones, and rubble. She looked down and realized that she had lost all that she had gained in that wretched state. And with a smile upon her face, she walked out of what once upon a time was a house. And she walked and walked and walked. And they say she still walks. That is a very old South Indian folk tale that communicates the importance of telling stories. When we hear stories like that, the images unfold in our mind. We begin to replace the characters with people that we know. Sometimes we put ourselves inside that story and slowly we begin to see our own truth through the story. And that in itself is a catalyst for change. Time passed. The radio, the television, and even the cinema slowly took over the role of the storyteller. And today, now, we have something small, portable, and powerful that also tells stories. This small device tell stories that are short, in high definition, and it can be repeated upon demand. What is the future of the storyteller? The future is to embrace this change and to look within this change for opportunities to help, support, and create awareness of something old like storytelling. I use social media and YouTube videos to demonstrate my art. I talk about my artistry of storytelling and I reach out to a global audience. People hear about my work because I show them and I share with them using this change. This creates intrigue and the intrigue in turn creates interest. And so the young apprentice of the old storyteller left the village and went to cities and towns and factories. And this created a gap in how stories were transmitted and passed on. And this impacted upon repertoire. I grew up with a storyteller grandfather. And as a child, I inherited his repertoire of Indian epics. Now, this master and apprentice model hardly ever happens in today's world. In this situation, I saw the potential for change. And so six years ago, I decided that alongside being a practicing storytelling artist, I would become an artist educator. And so I began my journey as a teacher of the art of storytelling. And I worked in an arts college. And over time, young storytellers were developed. Young storytellers are the emerging artists that we need for the future 
to ensure the sustainability of the oral tradition. Young storytellers must be nurtured and guided just like the apprentices of the old days. Six years later, there has been change. The young storytellers in Singapore, they perform in public. They get paid an income for their art. They have been featured in the Esplanade, in the Arts House, in local and international festivals. And I am proud to announce this month the launch of the first ever Young Storytellers Mentorship Project with support from the National Arts Council's Noise Movement for Youth Arts. Change is constant. It is the only thing that we can be sure of in life. But as artists, we know how to adapt and evolve and play with this change so that we can continue to tell our stories. I leave you with a very short and well-known folk tale from China, The Lost Horse. There was once an old man who had a son, and they had a horse, a magnificent stallion. They lived in a village over here, and there was the large mountain and on the other side of the mountain were the terrible nomads. One day, that magnificent stallion ran away up across the mountain to the nomads. And the entire village came to the old man and offered their condolences upon his loss. The old man simply listened and said, What makes you think this is not a blessing? Time passed. And that stallion came back up across the mountain to the old man's home, bringing with it a magnificent nomad stallion. The entire village gathered and they congratulated the old man on his gain. Another horse. The old man simply listened and he said, What makes you think this is not a disaster? Well, time passed and the old man's son loved to ride his nomad stallion. And one day he fell off that stallion and he broke his hip and he could never walk again. The entire village came to the old man and offered their condolences upon his terrible loss. The old man simply listened and looked at them and said, What makes you think this is not a blessing? One year passed. And the terrible nomads came up across the mountain to that village to battle. And every able-bodied young boy and man picked up their weapons and went to fight. The battle was terrible and bloody and many, many, many men lost their lives. But because he was old and because his son was lame, they survived the terrible battle. And they continue to love and look after each other for many, many years to come. Sometimes, blessings turn into disasters. And sometimes, disasters turn into blessings. The changes are never ending. And we cannot fathom the mystery of change. Thank you.